Welcome to another episode of Parenting in the Far North. I'm your host, Ariane Aaron Bureau, and today's guest with me is Christine Rogers. So she's a birth doula and childbirth educator serving Anchorage and the Matsuburo, a lifelong Alaskan and mom of four. She serves on the board of the Alaska Birth Collective and is passionate about serving families through pregnancy and birth and to help them advocate for themselves and have empowering and birth and positive birth experiences. Please welcome to the podcast, Christine. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. So before we kind of get into the topics of what you're here to talk about, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, like you said, I'm a lifelong Alaskan. I was actually born here in Anchorage at Providence Hospital. And being a mom of four here in the state and living here my whole life, I think there's a lot of challenges that sometimes we face um, as parents that maybe people who aren't living uh, here don't always understand. Um, You know, I've rescued my kids from the Kenai River while did knitting and things like that. And not everybody, like, that's not a story (laughs) I can tell in Texas that people will really understand. So. Um, I am, like you said, very passionate about supporting our local families, and my my dream is that everybody walks away from their birth with that empowering and positive experience, being able to say, like, wow, look what I just did. And you have four kiddos, ages, and boy, girl. I have uh, three girls and one son, 17, 15, 13, and 10. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So my These... oldest is going to graduate next year, so I'm having all the feelings about oh, that. Oh, I bet. I bet. I know we just had the graduation. I'm like thinking, I have an eight-year-old, so, you know, it's like, it'll it'll be it'll be here before you know it. I can, I know. Yeah. It goes fast. So, all right. Well, let's talk about, uh, first, what is a doula? What is that? support look like for folks who may be listening and maybe have heard the name, the terminology, they're not exactly sure. Um, How would you break it down for someone? In a nutshell, a doula is a professional birth coach, birth Mm -hmm. assistant. We are non-medical providers, so I'm not not your doctor, not your nurse, not ever going to take your blood pressure or check your baby's heart rate and things like that. But we really look at uh, doula support from four avenues, through information, education, Mm -hmm. emotional support, and then advocacy. So if you are in a position where you just, you're having a baby and the doctor comes in and says something like, well, this is what we're seeing, maybe a complication that's arising in your birth. And you really don't know what that means. I'm someone who's there who could help you say like, how do you feel about that? Let's talk about what that uh, looks like for you, how it may change, you know, what your birth plan has been, what your birth preferences have looked like. But then again, making sure that you are retaining your agency, retaining your autonomy and still being able to be the boss of your birth, make the decisions that you feel are best for you and your family with all the support that I can provide. And then, of course, there's always the physical things thrown in, you know, like um, back rubs and foot massages and counter pressure <laughs> and hip nice. squeezes and all the, all the things, you know, through contractions, yeah. that physical support. Mm-hmm. But honestly, I feel like um, the physical support is is on the lesser side of what I do. A lot of it is that emotional, informational advocacy um, and kind of things. Because I bet for first-time moms or just maybe not even first-time moms, there's just a lot of questions and every birth is different. Every birth is different. I actually have a lot of clients who hire me for their second or third birth mm. after having a traumatic birth experience the first or second time around. And what they're really looking for is somebody there who can help advocate for them and maybe steer, help them steer in a better direction so that they don't go through what they went through the first time. How did you get into this? Uh, did you have a doula with any of your children or just curious or were you like, I should have and now I'm going to be one? <laughs> <laughs> no, I had my husband who was uh, fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And our, our birth stories look like everything from, from very normal physiological textbook birth to I had an emergency cesarean with my third. So personally, I feel like I've run uh, the gamut and done all of the things myself. But what actually ended up happening was my sister had a baby. Uh, She's going to be nine this summer. And she said, like, you should come with me while I'm in labor because you've done this before. And I thought, like, okay, like, you know, you're my sister and I love you. I'll go Mm -hmm. help you have your baby. (laughs) And what ended up happening um, was she had a a very difficult traumatic birth. Mm. And we were kind of processing it still about three, four years later because at the time my my kids were still pretty young. And um, she said, you know, have you ever thought about being a midwife? And I thought, like, that sounds like a lot of responsibility. (laughs) (laughs) That sounds like a lot of decision making. And Mm -hmm. and she said, well, what about being a doula? And I remember we were having lunch at this restaurant out in Wasilla. And I was like, I had a fry, like, poised halfway (laughs) to my mouth. And I remember stopping and putting my food down and staring at her and thinking, like, why am I not a doula? How has this never occurred to me until this moment? And it was this aha, you know, clouds parting uh, Hmm sunshine moment. And I ended up contacting another local doula who I'd never met before. I I Googled Alaskan doulas and she pointed me towards a training that was happening in two months. And I took a training and I hit the ground running and I never looked back. Wow. So so that was about five years ago. I've been practiced for about five years now. So what, what do you, what kind of training do they lend for that? You know, um, how long does that take? And then how do you jump into kind of having your first client? 
the certification course I took was a weekend long, mm -hmm. um, very intensive, you know, something like 16, 18 hours of training over two days. And then I took um, a certifying test and, and went forth from there. I actually recertified with a different certifying body a couple of years ago to enable me to be in network with TRICARE so I can serve local military mm -hmm. families as well. And that certification process was actually a lot more intense. It was another weekend of training. I read um, upwards of a dozen books. I audited several, several local breastfeeding and childbirth education classes. I connected with all kinds of local people. Um, and their process for the second certification I took was to, you know, attend three births and kind of write up mm -hmm. how you went through those births. I was already a practicing doula at that time. So she allowed me to um, have some of my clients submit um, how they felt I had done uh, mm -hmm. for them and to kind of skip that process. But then it was just hitting the ground running. Um, my first, so I opened, I opened my practice in January of 2020, mm -hmm. which was perhaps oh, um, right before right, the pandemic. <laughs> right before the pandemic. Know. So for, oh, about a, for about a year and a half, it was very slow going. I did mm -hmm. a lot of home and birth center births because we just weren't allowed in the hospitals at mm -hmm. the time. Um, but once, you know, that kind of re reopened, I have um, a social media presence that I do a lot with. I'm like, I am on the board and a member of the Alaska Birth Collective. And I just... I really love my work. I'm very passionate about it. So I talk about it. I've, I picked up a client at my friend's son's birthday party because uh, her sister-in-law was about eight months pregnant, was talking about having insomnia. And I sat and I talked mm -hmm. with her about pregnancy and she called me a week later and she said, will you be my doula? And I said, I'd love to be your doula. And so I attended her birth. And um, so, yeah, for the first couple of years, it was mostly my friends who, you know, thank God, they're very prolific baby having <laughs> group of people. <laughs> so my friends, my cousin um, had a baby, you mm -hmm. know, and that was... Um, but then they started talking about me and I started getting more comfortable talking about myself. And now the vast majority, like 95% of the people that I serve, I've never met before. They contact really? me for doula services. Oh, well, that's great. Um, you mentioned the Alaska Birth Collective. What is it and what does it provide for members and the community at large? So the Alaska Birth Collect Collective, I'm really, really proud to, to be a member and to be on the board. We're doing um, really amazing things. It's a local resource. And by local, I mean... Uh, State statewide resource. Mm -hmm. We're looking to connect anybody who's having a baby or any um, early childhood um, issues with local providers. We've got midwives and chiropractors and pelvic floor therapists and lactation consultants all over the state. And so what you can do is you can go in one place. It's um, to our website, alaskabirthcollective.org, mm -hmm. and find our provider list, our provider menu, and look for all kinds of people that are in your area that we can then connect you with. And as far as providers... Um, we are always taking new members. Um, we love having new members join in. You get a place on our website and our provider gallery and then all kinds of things that we have done as well. Um, we did a baby fair recently with um, the Alaska Spring Filling for Women over at the Alaska Airlines Center. We were there all weekend and various and sundry other um, events and different advertising things that we put on. Mm -hmm. um, we provide for all of our um, providers and members. We're also constantly on the lookout for new board members. If anybody ever wants to get involved and to join in, we have open board member meetings once a month, and we will send that Zoom out to anybody who's interested in just kind of talking to us about what we're doing or just wants to get more involved in their local birth community. And we really welcome um, all of those, uh, you know, collaboration and new information. We, are, we really like to have new people come, the new ideas that come up, and mm -hmm. people will jump in and say, like, well, have you ever thought of this? And we'll be like, no. We have not thought of that. Like, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for coming and giving us those ideas. And then we're able um, to run with it as best we can. Right now, the board consists of four people who are all also working full-time jobs. Um, two of us have our own doula practices. One's in school full-time, becoming um, a perinatal mental health uh, mm. professional. Oh, and the other great. one runs okay. an accounting service. So we do the best that we can um, mm -hmm. with the four of us. But the, we are always looking for um, more ideas, more collaboration, more manpower, just... Um, yeah, please, please come check us out. What are your particular specialties? <laughs> As a doula. As You're a like, doula. I know you wear many hats. I wear, I wear many hats. Um, one of the places that I have found myself recently has been in a more um, high-risk environment. I think that a lot of people look at doulas and think that doulas are only for um, home births, only mm -hmm. for people having planning very natural um, out-of-hospital births. But really, because I'm a doula and I think we're amazing, I hope that anybody who ever wants a doula can someday have access to one. We um, we really thrive in all kinds of situations. But like I said, for me personally, uh, in the last couple of years, I have found myself in several just very high risk, high pressure situations with people having very complicated and difficult births. And I found that that's a place um, that I really thrive. So I'm so happy to like do a home birth or a birth center birth with you. You know, sometimes the very... Um, 
can I say easy? Like the very simple mm -hmm. um, births are are very pleasant, and uh, sometimes I think like, oh, that's it. I'm like oh, that, that was that was amazing. <laughs> yeah. But if you're looking at some, you know, you've got preeclampsia, or mm -hmm. you have um, difficult fetal diagnoses, or you just you're having to have an induction for whatever medical reason. If you're having multiples. Um, any of those things that can kind of throw a wrench into a birth plan or a birth environment, or you just, you know that you're going into it and it's going to be complicated. It might really be difficult. That is the place where I find that I really thrive. And so I have fantastic doula friends across the country who only do um, home births or only do um, very natural, um, you know, natural kinds of births and labors. Mm -hmm. And that's where they are really happy to be. Um, but I do probably 80% of my work in hospitals working alongside nurses with obstetricians, with the maternal fetal medicine specialists, with um, all the kinds of things that can can really be be difficult. I routinely spend, you know, 30 to 40 hours laboring and birthing with my clients and I can catch a nap on a couch for an hour and then <laughs> put a put a Dr. Pepper in me and I'm like rare, ready and raring to go. I um, bet just your presence of being there too it helps the partner kind of focus on, you know, mom getting ready to give birth and you're kind of almost that you're taking a little bit of that worry off if things kind of start to get complicated, I imagine. Doulas work for both mm -hmm. parents, both partners, and that's really um, vital, I think, for a lot of dads, a lot of partners mm -hmm. out there, especially if it's their first time going through it. Birth can look really scary yeah. um, from the outside. If you're seeing the person that you love, like, really struggle. And a lot of times, the thing that I say the most is, like, tell a partner, like, this is okay. Like, this is what birth looks like. This is what birth sounds like. I know she's making these, like, crazy sounds, <laughs> but that's really encouraging to yeah. me. Like, yeah, she just threw up. It's really okay. Mm -hmm. And I had one dad recently. Um, they had a really, really difficult birth. It's actually the last birth that I did about a month ago. And um, he waited for his wife got an epidural, and he waited for her to fall asleep. And then he looked at me, and he just kind of melted down a little bit. Uh -huh. And he, he needed to protect her while she was awake and it wasn't safe for him to do. And so afterwards, you know, we sat and I sat with him on the couch and we talked for a long time. And then I did my doula questions like, when was the last time you ate? Yeah. <laughs> like, have you yeah. put anything in yes. your body? Like, here's a glass of water. Why don't mm -hmm. you go outside and take a nap? Get some fresh air. I'm going to sit right here with her. She's sleeping. She's never going to know you're gone. I've got your number. If she wakes up and something happens, I'll call you. You can come right back in. But that way, partner can go knowing that... Um, you know, laboring, laboring mom is not alone. And then I can just, again, be, be that, um, presence for, for both of them. I tell partners all the time, like I work for both of you. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's really important that you're able to do everything that you can to provide for your partner. I talk a lot about, um, oxytocin, which is, uh, natural birth hormone and it comes through like love and connection and so when you have oxytocin flowing your labor your contractions are happening your labor's maybe going a little bit better mm -hmm. so whatever I can do to facilitate things between you and your partner to help that oxytocin going because like I care about you a lot but maybe I also met you four months ago <laughs> and you're not going to have the same connection with me that you are right. going to be with your husband of 10 years right mm -hmm. and so if you can get in there and do things that's going to help her and then I can help it's a it's a very like I'm almost like, imagine like a massage train, like you help her and then I'm going to help you. And then we can just, um, all facilitate. If somebody's interested in going the route of having a birth doula, how far out do they need to be looking? Is this, when does a doula come in on the stage of pregnancy? <laughs> Could it vary? And then afterwards, you know, postpartum, what does that look like? So I have had people call me, um, within five minutes of a positive pregnancy test. I had a, um, a client who I birthed her their second baby with them and she called me and she said well we found out this morning that we're pregnant and my husband said you better call Christine and make sure she's got time in eight months and I did that birth with them that was their third child okay and I had a lady call me last winter who said I think I'm in labor um are you free this evening I think I'm in labor I think I'm oh in labor. my goodness could, could you and my I tell people if you have a baby inside of you you can hire a doula um okay she ended up not being in labor mm -hmm. and uh but it was really funny because I was due to fly out at 6 a.m. the next morning. And I said, listen, if you have a baby by 2 a.m., I can support you. Um, and I, was, I wasn't doing anything else. I was packed. I don't want to do anything else that day. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so really, if you're, if you're pregnant, you can hire a doula. And as far as a, as a birth doula, there mm -hmm. are postpartum doulas um, out there who specialize in helping new families. You know, you get home from the hospital mm -hmm. and you just need someone to come in and maybe, maybe just sweep the floor, maybe make dinner, maybe hold the baby so that you can take a shower and a nap. Just help facilitate... Um, recovery and rest and help you with your internal mental health and all those kinds of things. And so I do some of that. Um, postpartum work is not my, um, definitely not my focus, mm -hmm. but I will do a lot of postpartum work with people that I've birthed with as well. Because by the time you've gone through labor and birth with somebody, 
Um, maybe they don't feel so bad if you come over and their kitchen's a mess. Like yeah. there's a little bit um, kind of more connected. Yeah, you like just you know, watch my, and have a baby. <laughs> my, my amniotic fluid broke on you last week. Like I don't mind if my dishes aren't done. So <laughs> yeah, um, just that that kind of comfort. Yeah. Um, what what would you say, or I guess for um, your first experience, you know, once you went through and got the certification, and like how you said this is kind of a calling for you, something you always wanted to do. What was that like when you had your first family experience, like being on the other side? Because you're a mom. <laughs> So what was it like kind of being on that end and going through your first experience as a doula? So I'm going to tell you two stories about mm-hmm. this. My very first person who ever hired me was one of my best friends. And she was kind of chomping at the bit. She knew I was taking the certification. And she said, as soon as you have passed your test and you have a contract, send it to me and I want to sign it. And so I did. And it ended up being a very difficult story. She had a 22-week stillbirth. And so what that also inspired in me um, was... Um, a passion for helping families who are going through that. So I have specialized training in bereavement doula work as well. Like if you are having, if you're having a miscarriage, if you have um, a difficult fetal diagnosis where you don't know if your baby's going to survive birth or if you're dealing with a stillbirth, like I have, I will come and I will be with you and I will do that. And I do all of that work um, in honor of my friend's baby who they, they later told us that they had wanted to ask my husband and I to be her godparents and, um, so I, I do that work um, in honor of my goddaughter. Um, and that is something that I, again, feel very, very passionately about. And people have a difficult time hearing that. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not a, nobody ever thinks of that part of birth work. Yeah. But unfortunately, if you do this work long enough, you will encounter loss. And I feel like those families need us even more mm-hmm. when you're dealing with a situation like that. My first, um, like, live birth um, was another... <laughs> Another one of my best friends. <laughs> <laughs> you Same. did say that. They, were, all, you, they were a they lot were of your friends, friends and family. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And so I went with them. Um, and <laughs> who's also also my goddaughter. Um, they're the only two of my, mm-hmm. like, you don't have to ask me to, like, godparent your, your baby if I birth it. Christine's, available. Christine's available. <laughs> your honorary godmother, I'm sure, to a lot of kiddos. <laughs> a lot of auntie. Yeah, you know, a lot of kids call me auntie. Mm-hmm. Um, but I went uh, with my friend and... Um, it was the, my husband came and picked me up from the hospital afterwards because I had left my car at their house in Eagle River. We drove in. She's like, I don't want you to drive separately. Will you ride with us? And I said, of course. And he picked me up from the hospital that night. And I think I talked like nonstop, which I'm a talker anyway, but from Providence Hospital to our home, we were living in Eagle River at the time. And I just like, I couldn't get over like, this was amazing. And it was like the miracle of birth. And this was so like, and then my friends had just had a baby and all of these things. And I was like, this, uh, Oh, that was fantastic. And of course, this is what I want to do, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, you know, for a living. And I'm really grateful that that, that first, you know, in-person birth experience, because um, I ended up not being with my friend um, when she had her silver. She had traveled to Seattle for some some specialized mm-hmm. um, infant medicine, and that was where she had her baby. But so this first, like, in-person birth experience um, was really positive and really great. And uh, even... <laughs> my dirty little secret, (laughs) even though like, God bless my friend. I was so excited when her baby was born, I was holding her leg and I dropped. dropped Oh no, no, you dropped the friend's leg. I dropped my friend's leg and she had an epidural so she couldn't tell. And the nurse told me, she's like, she can't feel that. She's going to fall off the bed. And then, so three days later she asked me, she's like, it's really weird. My hip is so sore. And I was like, oh my gosh. (laughs) What had happened was. What happened was, I was so excited. (laughs) So I'm very careful. I don't drop legs anymore. That was a, that was a first time. Christine's very excited thing. Um, But uh, yeah. And so some of the births that I have attended, you know, since then Mm -hmm. and have been, like I said, those really difficult kind of hard, um, long, really hard things, yeah. but, um, there's still, there's still always, there's always a miracle. And when you get a bunch of doulas together, um, in virtual spaces and in-person spaces, anything like that, we, we all feed off of each other because we, okay. we call it the birth high. Mm-hmm. There's just, there's a lot of endorphins and a lot of our own like oxytocin and, um, a little bit of an adrenaline rush. And it, it can sometimes be a little bit addictive. Um, but there's, there's nothing like it. Yeah. So interesting. Um, what would you say is the best advice that you can give to families who are expecting babies to really work to curate and craft the team of people who are going to care for you? Make sure that you have chosen a provider with doctor, midwife, whoever mm-hmm. that you connect with, that you feel like is listening to you, that is going to support your choices. If you're leaving your obstetric appointments, feeling really positive and empowered and like, Oh, I wish I could just like hang out with my doctor. I want to mm-hmm. take him out for coffee. They're so great. That's a mark of a really good provider that you have a good connection with. If you're leaving your, your doctors, or your midwife appointments and you're thinking like, I can't stand that person. And I'm so angry. 
I'd really encourage you to find a different provider because it's important to work with someone that you trust. And then, you know, building that team as well, if you have, um, have your doula interview several, don't just necessarily, unless it's, you know, me, of course, (laughs) joking, but I always tell the people who interview with me, they Mm -hmm. say like, well, I have another interview with somebody else in a few days. I'm like, that's fantastic. Right. It's gotta be a right fit. I want you to find the person that you're like, no, this is the one for me. And Mm -hmm. if it's not me, if you've interviewed with me, um, but you just feel like that lady talks a lot, like, cause I do, I'm a talker, um, Let me know. You can't hurt my feelings by not hiring me. I want to make sure that you have the person who's going to be with you. Let me give you the names of here's my other doula friends in the Mm -hmm. area that you might have a better fit with. If I have somebody, you know, if I have a, um, an LGBTQ couple who comes to me and I, they're talking about really wanting support in that arena. I have a friend who's a queer doula. And I Mm -hmm. think like, not that I wouldn't provide amazing support for you, but I think I could maybe line you up better, um, here. I've had, I've had BIPOC couples come to me and they're like, I really wish I could have care providers, who look like me, mm-hmm. take care of me. Like, that's fantastic. I yeah. am like so white that I'm transparent, <laughs> right? But let me connect you with my friend Ty <laughs> yeah. or let me connect you with my friend Laura, mm-hmm. who's uh, who's native. And um, we're, we're a pretty tight-knit community. And the yeah. importance is that you have the people who are going to make you feel the safest because that's how you birth best is when you feel safe. And I think I can take fantastic care of anybody but I also don't ever want my own ego to get in the way that I think like I have to do all the things mm-hmm. and like no I, I can't be all things to all people and there are definitely people out there who do things um, better than I do in, in different arenas and I want to connect you with those people so really take that time and that care to build your provider team and don't ever be afraid to um change providers if you need to. Some people think that they can't and you really, I was gonna say, really have you can. Heard? Yeah. I mean, I would, you know, some, you're pregnant, you're already kind of stressed out. Maybe if it's your first, you're a little bit shy. And I'm just trying to think back to when I was and you, they're the experts, they're the doctors, the, you know, physicians. And so I'm sure some might feel like they can't speak up or I really don't like that. Is that kind of where a doula helps come in and and steps up and advocates for them and speaks for them? Or do you talk separately with the family and kind of bring them they they bring those to the, to the doctors or. So I'm very careful to never speak for somebody. Mm -hmm. That's, um, that's not my job. Mm -hmm. And, um, my, my job, my lane, my scope of practice is to make sure that you have all the information that I can provide for you. And then you make the decision and then I back it up unequivocally hundred percent, even if I don't agree with it. Mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, like my opinions do not belong in your birth room. Like it doesn't matter what I think I'm here. Like I work for you. And so if somebody was saying, um, like I'm really struggling with my provider, I might ask, well, what, what is causing that to think? And what would, um, that ideal provider look like? Mm-hmm. And then if I know somebody like there's a, um, a provider that I recommend all the time, cause he's my favorite. Anyway, mm-hmm. he delivered two of my kids. And so I've worked <laughs> with him as a parent and yeah. as a doula. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I recommend a lot of uh, people to him, but also sometimes I think like, no, he'd be a really bad fit for, for this, um, person. I've helped clients, um, switch providers at the very end of their pregnancies. I've helped clients, change providers uh in the middle of their labor and birth really when there was just a bad occurrence mm-hmm. and they were like we um we don't feel safe in their care mm-hmm. and don't want them back in this room again I said, okay like let's let's pivot and um so yeah people i think forget that they are like i tell people all the time like you are driving this car you are the boss of your birth of your body of your baby and people forget when we get into an obstetric um, labor and delivery mm-hmm. model that like you're paying everybody in this room a lot of money <laughs> yeah. to, to work for you and to care for you. Mm-hmm. And you get to decide what you want that care to look like. And if you hire somebody who's your, your doctor, your midwife, you want to be able to trust their medical opinion as well. So if something does kind of go sideways or pivot and they say like, we're really concerned about, you know, ABC and we need to make this change. If you have a provider that you've been with and that you've like interviewed and you think and they're like, no, I really trust their medical mm-hmm. opinion as opposed to the one you're like, I don't think I like this doctor. And I'm just kind of stuck with them because I didn't know what else to do. And they come in and they say, hey, and you're like, well, but is it, is it really? Mm-hmm. And so there's, um, and that can just really interrupt just the physiological process of birth, that worry and concern. Um, that stress. So, yeah. 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 And it, so as doulas, like we really try to mitigate, um, stress whenever we can. Mm-hmm. And, uh, we we're trying to to, um, prevent that fight or flight, um, 
because all that adrenaline is gonna oh, it's gonna I, slow your birth down. Yeah, and yeah. it happens all so fast. It's like a blur, and you wake up, you're like, oh, there's a child here now. <laughs> <laughs> yep. um, and you know, this is called parenting in the far north. Uh, we live in Alaska, and you kind of touched on it a little bit in the beginning. It's you know, we're a very unique state. What have you come across just as a doula and representing and being with families here? You know, um, that's kind of unique to Alaska and parenting in Alaska in that regard. Um, as far as like I, you know, I've pulled my own kids from you know the Kenai River. Well, my two, my, I will not say which child it was, so they're not <laughs> horrified. But one of my kids, we were camping in Seward when they were really little, and mm -hmm. I turned around and they had taken all of their clothes off and were wading in Resurrection River, which is like glacial runoff. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking like, I had some friends with me who weren't Alaskans, and they were horrified. And it's like that river is so cold, and your baby has no clothes on. I was like, yeah. <laughs> it'll, 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 like, it'll be okay it's like I laid a stay for like a minute and I was like yeah. alright like, and then I carried her back to the campsite like naked and kicking and screaming mm -hmm. you know like a best sack of potatoes under one arm um, but I work with a lot of um, families who are looking for um, cult culturally appropriate support mm -hmm. and there's a great network up here the um, Alaska Native Birth Workers Network and they work a lot with our Alaska Native families with ANMC trying to make sure that people who are coming in from the villages and things like that to birth and to have their babies have that cultural network of the things that are familiar to them. Mm -hmm. um, and so because I'm not Alaska Native and that's not my, my history and my story, if I have somebody contact me who's looking for that, again, I refer out mm -hmm. um, to that to that group and they do really, really amazing work. Um, but I have people call me, they're like, you know, can I hack the butte at nine months pregnant? And I, I might say like, yeah, you can, but I would suggest that you take the, the back route that has all the stairs and mm -hmm. not the, you know, not the scary, like, um, vertical ascent route, um, that's right by the Yupik farm, you know? And so things mm -hmm. like that, like I, I know, and I yeah. have, um, I told one mom, she said, I'm in early labor. I'm going to go hike round top. And I was like, I really wish she wouldn't. Cause I know you want to like go do a hike and put yourself into labor, but if you go and you hike round top and you come back down and then you're not going to have any energy to like actually labor and birth. Mm -hmm. And she was like, Oh, okay. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but then we talk about like, okay, let's get, you know, good nutrition into you. You know, what's your, do you have a freezer full of salmon from diff netting last year? And, um, so just kind of things that I, I would not be able to say in, you know, South Carolina, Minnesota mm -hmm. that might be a little bit like, and then also just, I think Alaskans in general, we're a little bit of a, um, we're a little bit of a calmer, just kind of like, ah, you know, not mm -hmm. as, not as high strung um, people. My sister-in-law who I adore, she, <laughs> she told me she's from Tennessee. She said, she, I never really understood you. I came until I came to visit you in Alaska ah. and now you make a lot more sense to me. And I was like, yeah. yeah, you have to come in my environment. Yeah. She said, you're always like, you're so practical that it, mm -hmm. sometimes it was like practicality over everything. And I was like, well, I don't want to die. You know? <laughs> and when she came to, to visit, she kind of understood that a little bit more. Like we're going to go outside and play. And it's like, eh, I mean, the neighbor saw a black bear 45 minutes ago. Like maybe let's, yeah. maybe let's give that a hot minute. Like before you, you... you're able to just give that like calm calmness in the storm because like when everything's going crazy in the delivery room like you have to be there to just bring them back down to even keel I have a friend who told me once he said you've done really hard things and some of the really hard things that I have done have been like days you know like physically difficult like mm -hmm. days laboring down on the on the Kenai dip netting and bringing in salmon like like grabbing kids and kind of ducking from uh charging moose and like black yeah. bears on my front porch and and so when you kind of deal with Alaska nature like that, or even just the nature of being here mm -hmm. or, you know, like driving in snowstorms or s my suburban in the winter sometimes thinks it's really fun to like slide sideways through <laughs> intersections. And, um, you know, it's fun. It's a fun thing that we do. Mm -hmm. And so when I know how to deal with those kind of life and death, like immediate life and death um, situations, because I live here and we deal immediately with life mm -hmm. and death situations like that, sometimes... Um, things that are, are happening in, in births don't feel as, um, like I can, I can help manage that intensity. Yeah. What would you say to someone who's interested in going into this field? Um, you know, any advice or suggestions for kind of which avenue route they, they should take or if it, if it is even something they're interested in. So as doulas, we have to be really careful that, um, we don't become doulas to save people. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was part of my mentality. Like my sister, like I said, had a really hard, difficult birth. And I thought I'm going to be, go be a doula. So people don't have to go through what she went through. And so I had a little bit of a savior complex going in. Like, I'm going to be amazing. and I'm going to rescue all these people. And what I've learned, what I learned very quickly is that I can't, I can't do that. I can't save anybody. 
Um, so you have to really be able to take stock of yourself and what your motivations are, like why you're getting into this work. Um, and then you have to also be prepared because the same thing I thought too, when I trained that I'm going to go, um, I'm going to go hold some people's hands and I'm going to do some counter pressure and some hip squeezes and it's mm-hmm. going to be the miracle life and it's always going to be beautiful. And then my friend, my very first, cl- my very first yeah. birth, um, you know, she lost her baby. And so I was so unprepared for that. And my sister, uh, who again, I was at, as at her birth mm-hmm. is a, um, firefighter paramedic out in the Matsu. And so I called her cause she's seen some really terrible things as a paramedic. And I was like, how am I going to do this? And so she had some really good advice for me. And so, um, I was able to kind of prepare myself uh, a little bit better, but you have to be prepared that it's not always going to be uh, sunshine and roses mm-hmm. and you have to have a support network in place so that you can continue to do this work. Doulas burn out the average life, like not like lifespan, but mm-hmm. like work span of a doula yeah. is about five years. Really? Because they burn out so fast. Five years. Five years. And so when you are looking at people wow. who have been doing this work for five, 10, 15 my question is always like, who's your, who's your support network? Mm-hmm. How are you doing this? And I have, like, my husband is amazing. Like he, I'll come home from birth at 3 a.m. And he'll kind of like, you know, he'll wake up enough and be like, do you need to talk about it? And sometimes I'm like, no, go back to sleep. It's fine. Yeah. And sometimes I really do need to talk about yeah. it. And so he sits up and he kind of rubs his eyes and grabs a glass of water. And he sits and listens to me process a birth for two hours in the middle of the night. And um, so he's my first line of defense. Mm-hmm. We've been married for almost 22 years and there's no way I... I could do this work without him. But then I've got my sister who um, is amazing. And I have my, my doula friends far thither and yon. Like I have my Alaska birth bestie. <laughs> and we, we collaborate and we do work together all the time. Mm-hmm. But I was talking to a friend of mine this morning in Kentucky um, about a thing. And um, so you have to yep, yeah, check, your, check your motivations yeah. and have a network and be prepared for... Um, be prepared for the difficult. Like 90% is amazing and lovely. And 10% is really, really hard. So you said you started your practice in 2020. So <laughs> we're going in like four years. I know you said it was a little bit slower with the pandemic, but yeah. how, how long do you see yourself, you know, doing it? Or as long as you kind of have that release and, and can do it, do you see yourself going past the five years? Oh yeah. 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 And that was what I was talking to my friend about this morning was, mm-hmm. um, was sustainable, sustainable work. How can yeah. this continue to look? Um, sustainable for me. I go through phases and it's just birth work. And the only thing you can predict about birth is it's going to be unpredictable. And so like I'd had a kind of a quiet January, February, and then I did four births in five days in April. Wow. <laughs> and, um, just because that is what, what it looked like. Mm-hmm. And so two of my May clients birthed early and it was, so I haven't done a birth in a month because I did boom, 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 boom. Mm-hmm. I was, I think I slept over the course of like five days, like a collaborative sleep of about 10 hours. Wow. Uh, and that was in like snatches mm-hmm. and I was living on <laughs> caffeine and prayer um, <laughs> by the end. Sounds like that sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so I have um, a mom who is going to have a baby tomorrow. Uh, she's had been a baby induced. And then I have a mom who's due on Friday. And so Aww. the next week will probably be a little, uh, a little crazy, a little wild, yeah. a little fun. And then I'm taking um, the month of June off. I didn't have anybody, um, contact me. And so then I kind of decided to mm-hmm. take that breather, just sit in the little, I'm taking one of my kids to Arizona and then I'm coming home and just and tr- out. <laughs> no, I'm coming home and I'm turning around and taking another one of my kids to Pennsylvania for camp. Oh, oh you're so traveling. So it was like, yeah. so I'm traveling because I love to travel yeah. and, and part of my doula work, you know, it's really nice when we can pay our mortgage and my kids can eat, but <laughs> it's also really nice when, um, we can do things like I can take my son to camp and I can take my daughter mm-hmm. to Phoenix if we're going to a concert. And uh, she begged for months and I kept telling her no. And my husband was finally like, we can probably take her to that concert. It's like, oh my gosh. So we're going to some like crazy concert for an artist I've never heard of. Yeah. Um, but she's ecstatic. So That's like, a memory. Okay. She'll, that'll be ingrained in yeah. her for, quite, yeah. for forever. She's so. a big, big birthday. And for good them. for you on taking some time. And, you know, summers and June, that's a good travel time to kind of reset and then jump back into it. Are you, do you have like a busy season? Are you like, you know, winter, summer, it just, or it just is off the charts. I guess you just, just did say it was unpredictable. So yeah. April, knows? April was wild last mm-hmm. year in, it was, I think it was October. I had like eight births in the month of October, two of my December clients birthed early as preemies and like, so I had babies in the NICU. And so I try to only take three due dates a month, mm-hmm. uh, maybe four, depending on how the dates shake out. Yeah. And sometimes, um, the universe is like, that's, that's cute. That's like, fun. We're going to give you five. Yeah. We're going to give you five. We're going to give you eight. And eight. I think my son at one point in time was like, do you still live here? I, mean, I don't even know. <laughs> was that the most you had at one time? Eight? 
In that month. Okay, yeah. in that month. Wow. And that was a big life lesson for us. That was not a thing that mom can do mm-hmm. and and really survive with any amount of grace. Yeah. Um, so uh, we have to, I have to be careful about that kind of thing and to mm-hmm. not... Because I, I love my work and I hate saying no to people. <laughs> but I also really love my kids and I... Um, I like it when they are not eating cereal, mm-hmm. you know, around the clock. And it was, of course, it's, you know, it's summer break now. So it's, yeah. the anarchy has already begun. <laughs> um, yeah. I, left, I left my home in Palmer this morning at, you know, 930 to drive in. And only one of them is awake and, yeah, laying on the floor eating Cheerios and playing with Legos. So I was like, oh, well, <laughs> okay, well, see you in a few hours. Yeah, <laughs> like, <a> typical Tuesday. <laughs> yep. Um, well, I love all the information that you've shared. I will, as we kind of wrap, give you the last final thoughts. Anything that you want to mention or share, Ad, that I didn't ask or you just, um, you know, want to mention or share about being a doula or just your experience uh, in general? I think that um, if you if you want that support, um there are always ways to navigate having it present because doulas are always self-employed. Sometimes our services um, like maybe out of budget for some people, but Mm -hmm. there are lots of avenues. I'm a provider with a network called be her village, which is actually a um, it's like a, almost a GoFundMe for birth support. And so if you're looking for to add a doula to your baby registry and to have your family help, Oh, that's uh, a good idea. I didn't that think thing. about that. Yeah, for yeah. the baby registry. Okay. And so that that can help. You know, where I'm a network with Tricare, and so if you're a military family and you're looking for that that local support, there's three of us in the state right now that can um, can work with Tricare. And um, like, really, if you need that support, then I really encourage you to look for it. And then if if you're okay with a same shameless uh, self promotion, um, my business name is Draw Near Doula Support Services, and you can find me online at drawneardoula.com or on Instagram at, at drawneardoula. And if you ever want to reach out, shoot me an email or, or anything like that and just um, to chat or to look at support, I'm always, always happy to talk to people. Draw Near, and that's D-R-A-W-N-E-A-R. Okay, yep, Draw, Draw Near. Near. Draw Near Doula. Okay. Well, I learned a lot today. Christine, thank you so much for taking the time and driving all the way in and sharing your story with us. Yeah, we absolutely. appreciate it. And thank you all for listening to another episode of Parenting in the Far North. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you. Thank you.